In 2021, Anne Maltzonski received a devastating diagnosis, a rare blood cancer that took her to the edge of life. Yet nearly four years later, an experimental treatment has granted her the gift of time. It's a remedy found in an unlikely place, the intricate ecosystem of the human gut that's part of what's known as the microbiome. This new organ is going to be the holy grail of what we can do to improve human health. Around the world, researchers are only just scratching the surface. In France, one pioneering lab is seeking to turn fecal waste, rich with organisms from the microbiome, into medicine, potentially transforming the way we treat cancer. Our drug is showing an advantage in overall survival. This is the first time we've got proof that what is already within us, our own gut microbes, can help us beat what could be a life-threatening disease. At Nice University Hospital in the south of France, Dr. Losky cares for patients with blood cancer. Cancer remains a huge burden, but among them, the hematological malignancies, which um, uh, specialist of, have seen their incidence increasing over the years. Globally, one in five people will develop cancer in their lifetime. For decades, patients have been treated with chemotherapy, an approach that not only destroys cancer cells, but ravages the immune system too. But new research has revealed the microbiome, a collection of bacteria, viruses, parasites and fungi in the human gut, may hold the key to understanding better ways of treating and even preventing cancer. While only partially understood, it's the largest component of the immune system, containing up to 80% of our immune cells. It's a very exciting field uh, right now in cancer treatment because we have discovered that there is a very big link between our gut and the composition of the gut microbiota and how the immune system behaves. Meaning the state of our gut has a direct impact on our overall health. In a healthy adult, the gut microbiome is like a 26 foot long mini Amazon rainforest. It's flourishing, full of life providing diverse functions to sustain the body. But when it gets damaged and depleted of healthy microbes, it can turn into a wasteland, more like the Sahara Desert. It gets ulcerated and inflamed, and that depletes the body of energy, making it vulnerable to infection. One of the most promising applications of microbiome science is something called Fecal Microbiota Transplant, or FMT, which involves taking the waste of healthy donors and transferring it into patients. It's a medical approach that may have saved Anne Malzonsky's life. When I first met Anne, it was in 2021. It was a huge shock for her. Like many hematological malignancies suffering patients, she was feeling fine until the day she was not. Donc, ça a été vraiment, voilà, très brutal, et je suis, voilà, tombée dans cette maladie qui est une forme de cancer, mais par chance qui se soigne grâce à une greffe. A few months after her diagnosis, Anne received a blood stem cell transplant to fight her cancer. However, she suffered from a deadly secondary complication called graft-versus-host disease, or GVHD. Graft versus host disease is a hideous complication of a bone marrow transplant. It's when your new cells think that the rest of your body is foreign and start attacking it. And that attack can happen in the lungs, in the liver, the skin, but often in the gastrointestinal tract where it causes hideous diarrhea. She actually uh, developed uh, many infectious complications and at some point, she even had to be transferred to the intensive care unit of our hospital, and we had to use a second line of immunosuppressive drugs, and the second line didn't work. So we used a third line uh, of immunosuppressants, and that didn't work either. So that's where you start being very scared about the outcome of your patient, and uh, we had discussions about that. Often in cancer, it's not the cancer itself that kills, it's the infections that occur as a result of the treatment and the fact that patients have a weakened immune system. 
Faced with the reality of death, Anne was granted access to an experimental trial drug on compassionate grounds. Known as MAT-13, this fecal-based therapy created by Matt Farmer was specifically designed to treat graft-versus-host disease. It aimed to restore beneficial microbes and repair the gut, helping to rebuild her immune system. Ce traitement-là a été extraordinaire, hein, puisque après des semaines euh, à avoir des, des, des diarrhées euh, terribles, terribles, euh, j'ai été beaucoup mieux déjà le lendemain et 40. She was able to be uh, discharged a couple of weeks after that, and now uh, we are three years after the transplantation. There is no sign of uh, myofibrosis. She doesn't have any GVHD. She doesn't have any. Uh, complications uh, of her uh, transplantations. Bonjour, taux de globules blancs complètement normal, une hémoglobine parfaite, et puis votre taux de plaquettes qui était aussi uh, complètement normal. Donc absolument, on est vraiment très rassuré de ce côté-là. For patients like Anne, this treatment approach can be life-changing. She was facing certain death because of graft versus host disease. She was cured of that with this treatment. Elve Afagar is CEO and co-founder of Matt Pharma, the microbiome therapeutics company behind what they hope will be a life-saving drug. In 2014, when we uh, created uh, the company, uh, we wanted to leverage on the concept of rebuilding the microbiome to improve survival. Observational data from patients like Anne, who received MAP-13 via an early access program, were encouraging. Immediately after uh, the patient has been diagnosed, he'll receive uh, chemotherapies. As you can see, like 20 days after he has started the treatments, uh, his microbiome has disappeared. After he has received uh, the MAT drug, we are able to restore the microbiome at 90%. We have data showing that for all patients that have received MAP-13, at one year, they have a survival of 49% as compared to historical data, which are showing 15%. A treatment that improves one-year survival from graft versus host disease is a major breakthrough. Now, results from a late-stage clinical trial led by hematologists and sponsored by the French biotech show that MAT-13 can help save lives. Here in this sterile lab, gallons of raw fecal germs are processed and turned into medicine. The team can produce 4,000 litres of fecal microbes from less than a teaspoon of liquid stool, enough to potentially treat thousands of patients. To manufacture our main asset, MAT-13, we start with uh, fecal matter from LC donors. It means having no presence of more than 50 different pathogens, but also we monitor their health with a physician consults from time to time, just to be sure there is nothing that would affect the quality of the, of the microbial community. It's a crucial screening process to eliminate the risk of any infection. Rather than using a few selected strains of bacteria, Matt Farmer combines the bacteria from multiple donors, offering patients a menu of sorts. Each patient will pick up, so to speak, the best bacteria for himself. After a period of uptake of the MAT-13, we see that each of them has rebuilt his own microbiota by picking up the bacteria from donor one, donor two, donor three. It is waste, but you know, waste for one person or one process can be the starting of another process. Matt isn't the only one in this space. Although still in their infancy, these innovative approaches are gaining momentum. Some of the world's biggest pharmaceutical giants, including Sanofi and Merck, have announced deals with other companies developing microbiome-based treatments. Not all these ventures have been successful, underscoring the uncertainty in this emerging field. Thousands of miles away in Hong Kong, Professor Si Yu Ung runs a lab working to turn gut bacteria into drugs to treat a variety of illnesses, including COVID, Parkinson's and mental health diseases. She believes the microbiome could revolutionize human health. I think the microbiome probably is the last human organ that is currently uh, under active research. Uh, it's like a supra organ, or I would regard it as our second brain. Yet despite its relatively recent research, fecal-based medicines have a surprisingly long history. The first ever documentation 
of uh, using microbar to treat human diseases was back in the 4th century in ancient China. There was a very famous uh, Chinese physician called Li Shizhen. He's really documented the use of fecal matter described as the golden yellow soup to treat people with food poisoning because in those days, antibiotics just did not exist. Researchers have been looking for other clinical applications for fecal microbiota transplants, especially since doctors in the Netherlands showed in 2013 that donor feces could successfully treat a diarrhea-causing condition commonly known as C. diff. But gaining regulatory approval for other treatments has so far been elusive. Only two treatments have been approved by the US Food and Drug Administration so far. The idea is really to translate some of the uh, microbiome knowledge into clinical applications to detect disease earlier when it can be cured and so we can improve the health of those with different types of diseases. Matt Farmer's reported success with graft-versus-host disease marks an important breakthrough. It could pave the way for other treatments that Afagar thinks may transform cancer care. We have seen evolution in the treatments of cancer that has started with surgery, then radiotherapy, then chemotherapy, immunotherapy. But here we are adding another pillar, which is the microbiotherapy. Unlocking the potential of the microbiome in this way could play a key role in advancing treatments for a variety of other diseases too. Once it's proven in that indication, we will expand in many indications. Immunotherapy, autoimmune disease, we could expand also. We can think about obesity, we can think about longevity. We have created a lot of hope for the patients. Microbiome-based therapy has given Anne a second chance, an opportunity she holds close every day. I think without the drug, we wouldn't have been able uh, to save her, actually. Est-ce qu'on voit les choses différemment quand on est passé par ces épreuves? Je dirais oui, bien sûr. Ça change votre vie et ça change votre mental et votre perception de la vie, bien sûr. <laughs>